You're watching the free version of this tutorial. Upgrade to premium for all footage and projects and exclusive content. In this exercise, what we're going to be looking at is some of the tricks and limitations of planar tracking. So you have a better understanding of what the planar tracker is actually able to track and how we can start to offset tracks so that we can track things as they go off screen. So taking a look at our footage now, we have a straightforward uh, product shot and the camera moves from, uh, from left to right, tracking across these four pots of tea and or containers of tea, I should say. And let's create our first track. So I'm going to come up to our tools again and make another X spline layer. So come in one, two, three, four and right click to close the shape. And I can start to adjust this a little bit as well. Now you probably have noticed the white bounding box outside of our shape. And if I click and grab a hold of these, this is our transform tool. This lets us easily transform up a spline as a whole rather than just as individual points. But sometimes we might not want to actually see it on all the time. So if we go back up to our toolbar up at the top here, and you can see the white box with a little arrow in it. I click on that, that turns that off. And if I want to zoom in a bit closer to see what I'm doing, then I can use the zoom tool here and just zoom in. So I'm just uh, scrub up and down with the mouse. And if I want to pan around, I can use the hand tool over here and this will let me pan around the viewer. And I'm going to move back into my pick tool to be able to just move us back into the arrow. Now, I don't want to throw hundreds of keyboard shortcuts at you in quick succession. I'm a big fan of keyboard shortcuts, but I'm also a fan of learning them slowly and bringing them into the workflow quite slowly. So the first two keyboard shortcuts you want are for the zoom and pan tools. So we've got Z for zoom and X for pan. But here's where it gets cool. If I hold down the Z key and keep it held down, it will turn to the zoom tool. And as soon as I let go of Z, it takes me back to the previous tool that I was working with. The same with the X key. If I hold down the X key, it takes me into pan. And as soon as I let go of the X key, it will return me to the tool I was working with previously. So Z and X to zoom and pan around. Well, let's track this in now. So we go down to our tracking parameters. And I'm still going to leave the defaults as they are and just track backwards. Cool, then always, once we've got our track, we need to check it to make sure that it's working properly. We can play it back and it may look like it's working properly and working fine on the shape, but the only way to really check the tracking data itself is of course to come up and use our surface as we saw previously. Now as I move my corner around, you can see in the top left of the viewer, I have my zoom window. And this just zooms up where I am, so it can be quite tricky to see underneath my arrow, but if you look at the zoom window, then it makes everything a little bit easier to notice. Cool, so let's turn our grid on as well now. Just tweak that up so that it's sitting properly. I'm not really interested too much at the moment in everything being pixel perfect with regards to placement, but what I am looking for is, as we play this through, is our track consistent? Do we have any weird wobbles or jolts going on in the, uh, in the grid or on the surface that gives me pause for thought we go okay maybe this track isn't quite good enough we need to uh, do something else or retrack it but at the moment that looks absolutely fine and if i come to my layer properties i can even do the insert clip and stick our mocha logo inside there as well so let's come up to the top turn off surface turn off grid let's go up to our layer controls and rename this one container top and turn off the processing on that we don't want to retract that accidentally anymore and in fact i can even lock that up so i won't touch it by accident again and let's come back to our x spline tool and create a new layer and this time we're going to do here do the same thing and turn off our transform tool one more time and just as before i'm going to leave all the parameters in the track at their default so i'm not going to touch them don't worry, we will be going over this at a later date. But let's just see what happens now as I try and track this one back. 
we're going to have a few troubles in three, two, one, and oh, that's interesting. Now, normally, if your point tracker went off screen, it would just stop. It would start to dance around it once it hits the edge of the screen itself. But what's happened here is that because it's not just tracking a single point, because Mocha's tracking out that plane, you're able to get away with stuff going off screen a little bit. Let's have a look and actually check that out with the surface here, just as we did previously. So let's come in and we'll just move this around a little bit. And I'm just looking up again into the zoom window to make sure that things are placed where they should be or roughly where they should be. And I can turn the grid on now, just tweak that out just a little bit. Cool. All right. So let's play that back now. And again, I'm just going to be looking for any sorts of uh, signs of inconsistencies in the grid. And let's take a look there. As it gets, everything goes off screen. You can see we've got a little bit of a wobble going on. And that wobble there is, is really to be expected because we can't expect just that little sliver to zoom in a little bit so you can see that a little bit better. Yeah, comparing this tiny sliver of information we have here to the whole thing here where we've got a nice consistent track isn't really fair. So what can we do here? Now remember the shape data and the tracking data are two separate things. So what we can do is try to help the tracker along a little bit by keyframing up the shape and then retracking it. So I'm going to add a keyframe to the shape before it goes off screen. So add keyframe there down at the bottom. And I can now move between my keyframes with these two buttons to the left of the add keyframe. Cool. And now if I go to my first frame here, what I'm going to do is let's turn the transform tool back on again is I'm going to move my entire shape over. Because remember, the important thing is we're not tracking a particular point or a particular series of points. We're tracking a plane. So if I move this to something that's coplanar, for example, the front of the whole of the container here is, well, more or less coplanar. We'll talk about the less in a little bit, but say more or less coplanar. So if I move that over there and then just move that around about there. So what that's going to do is only going to track the stuff on the screen here. There we go. So we'll just run that through and that's that could be quite interesting to do. Now, of course, nothing has changed here because I haven't retracked anything. So I want to, I want to just do that. I want to go back and retrack. So I'm going to make sure that I'm coming to my keyframe here and let's just track that backwards. Now, without doing anything else, let's just turn the grid on and see if that's helped us in any way. I'll zoom out a little bit. Cool. And as you can see, when it's got to that tricky bit at the end there, we don't have that same wobble as we had previously. We're getting a nice, consistent track going through. One other way of doing this is to do a more traditional offset track as well. So, for example, I still want to get the label on this right hand uh, container, but I'm going to use the tracking data from this one here because of the way the camera is tracking over in a straight line and these aren't rotating or doing anything uh, strange or crazy. The movement itself is going to be pretty similar between this container and this container. So if I come in and track this one up, not doing anything too crazy with this here. But let's go over to the layer controls and hide the other ones here just so you can see what, I, uh, what I'm doing a bit more. And let's color code this new one. And as before, I'm not going to change anything on the tracking parameters. Let's just track this backwards. Lovely, wonderful. We have our surface already turned on. Let's turn the grid on just to make sure that that is tracking through consistently. Yep, everything looks absolutely fine there. Okay, 
So let's turn off the grid. Let's turn off the transform tool. And here's what I have to do. Remember, shape data, tracking data, completely separate from each other. The important thing is what's going on with this surface. So let's see what happens when I move this surface over from, see what happens when I move the surface over from our pot on the left to our one on the right and come over to the layer properties and they'll quickly do the insert clip to insert the logo in there. So now let's have a look. We've tracked this one over here. We've got our tracking data on this one over here. Let's play that back. So that's a good little offset track we've made there. Now these offset techniques may not work in every circumstance. And the reason for that is because you need to find things that are coplanar, which means that the item you want to track must have the same relationship to the camera and do the same sorts of movements in relation to the camera as the one you want to put the data on. Now, this is fine here because we've got a very linear movement going from left to right. Now, if these things were turning around and rotating at the same time, or if the camera was a bit more handheld and, and moving around a, uh, a lot more, this strategy might not have been as successful because there may have been enough perspective shift between this label here and this label over here. Uh, the same goes on when we've got a round tin as we have here. A planar surface is an infinitely thin, flat surface. It's a two-dimensional surface that's sitting in 3D space. So it's 2.5D, we can say, in that way. But if we look at the roundness of the tin here, if I create a... Uh, let's just show you something for the sake of argument. There we go. So if I were to... Actually, let's, let's just track this through. It's not going to take a second. Uh, I'll leave everything at default again, just track that through forwards. Great, and let's go to the end here and set my surface up that's describing this area here at the front, this label at the front. And I'm going to come over to my layer properties and do an insert clip, and we'll do a grid in there. Let me come up to the top of the viewer here and just turn off my layer outlines. And I'll also turn off the transform tool. So I've no doubt that this has tracked through all right. But if we have a little look here, as it's come over to the edge, check out what's happening there. Because this is a round tin, the edge is dropping off towards the back here. So some of that label is now invisible to us and the camera and it only becomes visible to us as we move around and we can see the other side of the tin. But because what we're seeing here is a planar surface, a 2D surface, we don't have that distortion going on. So it's not going to take into account stuff that we can't see to the camera. So there are things that are moving away in perspective. So that's something to think about if you're having issues with your offset track. Are you tracking something that's coplanar? And are you tracking the correct plane if so? And we've only just started now, so some of these problems we're going to come back to and we're going to fix and we're going to find solutions for them. But it's just something to be aware of right now if you are running away straight off to do your own projects and you're wondering why things aren't working exactly as you expected them to. Well, that's going to be it for this exercise where we looked at offset tracking and tracking things off screen. And we showed some different techniques for getting that perfect track when things just move out of view. And we also learned our first two keyboard shortcuts, Z for Zoom and X for pan. In the next exercise, we're going to start on a simple screen replace and how we can start to fix tracks when they go wrong. So see you then.